Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you. Good morning and welcome back to the channel where you join me today at Abt in Germany. Behind me, we've got the RS5R and also the RS4R. We're going to take a look around at the modifications that have really livened these two cars up. And then I'm going to be taking out the RS5R for a test drive on some lovely roads in the area. So let's get started and take a look at these two that have really brought something new, injected new life into the Audi RS5 and RS5R. Four. Let's get started and take a look around. First observations about these two then. I think it's fair to say the looks have been significantly enhanced. A little bit more aggression that is put into them. Of course, we're starting out with the Audi RS5 Coupe and the Audi RS4 Avant. There are many similarities between the two cars in terms of chassis, platform, powertrain, gearbox, suspension setups. And we'll talk about how those have been modified with these two cars. But on the face of it, you have the sporty Coupe mixed with the practical family estate car, so to speak. Both except exceptionally quick. As we're walking around them though, we'll start with the RS5R, finished in Sonoma Green with the addition of many carbon fibre aerodynamic parts. I'll go into more detail in a second, but you can see that the general aggression of the car has just been toned up a notch. It's been dialed up. And I think that was one of the biggest almost faults with the factory car was that it lacked that sense of occasion, that sense of extra style and drama as well when it's being driven. So I'm intrigued to see what that's like when I'm out on the road in a moment but for example new exhaust system new carbon fiber wing and parts around it then if we move over to the rs4r the avant the estate platform i've always been a big fan of powerful family wagons a sleeper car a car you don't necessarily realize is going to be quite as quick as it actually is this car's finished in nardo gray a very popular audi color the Sonoma Green on the RS5 was the launch colour for that car, but there are substantial updates and upgrades to both of these by Abt. So let's come in closer then and have a look around at some of the carbon fibre parts that have been added to this car. And I think we start right at the front with the new carbon fibre grille. The grille is wider than it was on previous generation Audis. The front leans right down. You can see the aggression of those lines over the bonnet that come down towards the front. You've got the RS5R logo there at the bottom the apt extended carbon fiber front splitter you've got the winglets worn around the front corners the canards there also coming around you've got new 21 inch wheels you can see the car is sitting on new adjustable suspension springs it also has an anti-roll bar carbon fiber parts added throughout the additional side skirt extension down there if we come around to the back you've also got the carbon fiber lip spoiler at the back of the uh, the rear deck lid and down at the bottom a new carbon fiber diffuser again wearing the rs5r badging designation at the back and of course a new exhaust this exhaust system. Twin tail pipes on each side. Normally you'd have a single oval large pipe. I'm looking forward to hearing how that sounds in a moment. If we come through to take a glance at the interior, there is also a lot of work in here in terms of carbon fiber upgrades. So we have a new smaller steering wheel, smaller, sportier. I like it a lot. Um, carbon fiber finisher at the bottom and top, carbon fiber center console, uh, gear stick, the seat backs as well, if I just pull those forward, full carbon. If you like your carbon, this is absolutely heavenly. Even the seat control area down there at the bottom. Awesome, awesome uh, interior finishing. RS5R floor mats, new Alcantara with embroidery here on the seats and the Abt logo on the headrests. It is a stylish, not overdone specification. I would say it still looks very smart and visually, like I said, it introduces some of that aggression and sportiness that I think the RS5 lacked initially. Similar story on the RS4R. You'll notice around the front, much the same parts in terms of the carbon fiber grille, the splitter, the different parts that have been installed, the 21 inch wheels, new lower suspension setup, um, carbon mirror caps, of course, I didn't mention before. And around the back, of course, no um, lip spoiler back here, but again, the diffuser and exhaust down at the base. Now, what I haven't talked about is the engine and power side of things. So let us just come and open this up so we can take a little look inside here and talk about. I do like the way those lines come down towards the front. Anyway, let us find the lever just here. Let's whistle that, lift it up. So we have the 2.9 litre turbocharged V6. Of course, the previous model RS5 had a V8. Stock power output is 450 horsepower and 600 newton meters. The Abt Power S package has 530 horsepower, up 80, 
and 690 newton meters up 90. Those are some quite significant power gains that you'll find in this car. Of course, both are matching like for like on this side of things. 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, just 3.6 seconds from the Quattro all-wheel drive system that you find inside the Audis as standard. So I think that's enough talking for the moment. Let us jump into the RS5, start it up, hear how it sounds, and then take it out on the road for a little test drive. In we hop, Audi's virtual cockpit display, always very, very nice. So the small steering wheel, got a new starter button with Abt logo on it. And into life. So I'm intrigued to see what this is going to be like to drive because the big thing I think with the regular car was it didn't quite have enough excitement, if I can say that. It's a great car, ticked many, many boxes, but it wasn't quite dramatic enough without or you could perhaps modify it and go completely over the top, but this is a very tasteful example. I just noticed also one of the 50 cars as well, just to point this out, the plaque inside the carbon fiber on the dashboard. So, excitement ahead, let's go and see what it's like. Into gear we go. So driving in normal automatic mode, just to get started, we've got the eight speed auto gearbox. So no more the S-Tronic, but a gearbox that is very quick, works very well and can handle extra power and performance for example as we have offered here we've got nice new extended carbon fiber shifters I hadn't necessarily picked up on those immediately before but they work very well because normally you feel like you've just got these small buttons on the back of the steering wheel whereas these extend the feel and make it well again a lot more sporty and I think that's the character of the car to start us off everything's very gentle though um, normal current model Audi procedure I suppose We've got a small bit of sound as we get started, but the V6 obviously not the loudest thing in the world. Anyway, if I put drive select into dynamic mode, it configures various aspects, throttle response, steering feel, the dynamic steering, the adjustable suspension, the exhaust sound, all of the usual kind of configuration elements, and things will get quite lively and we'll go find a nice road just to enjoy driving it on. Having the car in dynamic means that the gearbox is in the sporty mode, but of course you can press it to the right and go manual and we have an opportunity to use these shift paddles, the extended shift paddles, which do have a nice feel to them. Just dropping down the gears, you can hear some of those burbles on the overrun and the noise it makes. It's not necessarily as loud as I expected it to be, but it gets a move on. And what I thought about the RS5 originally when I drove it for the first time is that it's a very mature car. It's not boisterous and angry and shouty, say like the rivals, the BMW M4, the Mercedes AMG C63S, um, and also the Alfa Romeo Giulia, you could almost say, especially if they make a coupe version. But what it is, is a very, very usable car. You feel like it's stable, the ride is comfortable, even with uh, the additional sporty suspension setup of this car. And I'm sorry, it's cliche to keep on saying it, but I think the objective of this is to make a sportier RS5, to inject some life into it that it was missing on the original factory car. The steering doesn't necessarily feel as completely connected as you might want it to be in a, in a full sports car, but that's counter to make it a usable car and a car that is comfortable to drive, let's say, on autobahn and everyday environments, and we'll experience some autobahn, I think, a little bit shortly. Um, but the steering wheel feels good, the small steering wheel, something I like a lot because, I don't know, it just gives you more of a sense of occasion when you're holding it and driving with it noise, partly down to how much sound deadening there is, if I just drop the window a touch, it's quite windy. You hear a tiny bit more of it, but not, not a huge amount more. It is quite civilised, it is quite a civilised car, but it just looks just a touch more enhanced based on the standard car. Anyway, let's just notch it back to normal for a moment, put the drive select into comfort, just to experience what it does that way around as we go through a slightly slower speed limit section. And I can feel actually it's gone more, more floaty, more uh, just wallowy away over the, over the slightly uneven terrain. I mean, we're on a very good road here. Um, steering feel, just not quite as connected. Obviously, there's barely any sensitivity on the middle wiggle room in comfort, and that's what makes it so relaxing to drive, so comfortable. Cliched, yes, very, very, very cliched. Let's put drive select back into dynamic mode, and let's put the gear shifter back into manual wear, by the way. If you want to push it forwards and backwards, forwards is up, backwards is down, which is the wrong way around, because when you're braking and you want to go down, you want to be pressing it forward. Anyway, that's a, that's an Audi thing. Just to put my foot down. Goodness me. Yeah. Okay. It gets a move on. Anyway, let's go find some autobahn where we can open it up a little bit more. Here we go then. One of my favorite places to drive, 
the German autobahns, and in particular, the de-restricted German autobahns, where we can put our foot down and really experience the power of the car, the revs, the sound of it, as we quickly build up speed. Oh, into the rev limiter there, my bad, my apologies. I love the shift lights. We're well over 200 with ease up towards the standard car's limiter at 250. We're actually gonna get over 250 on the first little bit of acceleration. And it's got a lot of confidence at this speed. It's very, very gentle. There's obviously some wind noise from the exterior, but there's no dramas to the car. It is a car that you could blast a long, long distance with a lot of comfort. And away we go, the shift lights though, the way they all light up, you get various stages on the virtual cockpit before the entire dashboard flashes red to let you know it's time to take the next gear. The 2.9 V6, yeah, it doesn't have that noise of a V8 behind you. That is something that is definitely missed. The power though and the torque, and the early torque, you have a lot of that torque available straight away, is not something to be shy about. You know, it is It is there, it is there at an, at an ample level. Even just carrying high speed through a bend, has no concerns about it. it. Goes about business as if it was born to do this. The thing is, this is an everyday saloon car and we're just blasting along now at 270 on the dashboard on the brakes as we come towards the car here. 250 back on the power, no concerns at all. Just easy, up towards 280 now, yeah, 281 on the dash, but I'm gonna back off as we go past some cars. It's very, very quick, isn't it? It's very quick. So we get to a triple lane section now. We hopefully get the opportunity to uh, keep enjoying this power delivery. I did think there would be more noise. I honestly thought there would be more sound from it and you might want, you know, a slightly louder system, dare I say it, if there is an option available. As we just slow it down a notch and, well, I'm gonna put my foot down for a second, but get a little bit more comfortable with the car back into comfort mode. I think it's very much an all-rounder car. You feel that. It is a car that drives really well, but without necessarily the flair you might want from it. I love the new looks, the new carbon fiber parts, just more aggressive, more of something that makes a car exciting. But overall, it could be a little bit louder. It could still be a little bit more go, go, go. The power is there, but is the drama there in the way that you might necessarily want it from an abt RS5R? Anyway, let us turn around, head back towards base, take another look around some of the bits on the inside of this car. And it picks up speed like a crazy fool. 200 already. It's just go, just go, go, go. 240, 250, 260, 270. And I'm gonna go onto the brakes for a little bit of traffic, but all the way up to 270, just like that. I wonder where the top end would actually be. That's quite an interesting thing that I doubt I'm gonna to get to discover today, but do 300. Braking power is good as well, of course. Ceramic brakes, the carbon ceramic uh, fitted to both the RS5 and the RS4 in this case. Uh, obviously for extended usage on the track or on the autobahns. <laughs> if you miss the shift and you hit the red line, it doesn't respond immediately. So don't hit the red line. Well, don't try to hit the red line. But because there isn't a huge amount of noise and it comes up on you at about 6,400, you don't necessarily see it arriving until you're banging off it and then waiting for it to upshift again. As the road clears in front of us, away we go again. Just to press the throttle pedal and let the car do its thing. It gets to 200 remarkably briskly. And then it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. 60 again. We've got a whole crowd of cars ahead. So again, back onto the anchors with good power. Get some downshifts going while we do it. It's a very good autobahn car. It is a very, very good car for driving briskly on the German autobahns. When I was driving the other day in one of my cars, 
an RS5, normal Audi RS5, was right there with me and I was thinking, it does look like a car that's suited to this environment. And I can now confirm that, even more so when you're running it with 530 horsepower. 530 horsepower, think about that number. Not that long ago, that was almost hypercar territory. It's a huge number, 690 newton meters of torque. That matches supercars. Many supercars don't even have that much, uh, that much, that many newton meters. So, crazy performance. I just feel like I want a tiny bit more from it. A tiny bit more. That's a little bit down to the base car. That's not the abs take on it. The ab take livens it up how it should. Oh, we've got a G-force meter showing that we went 0.8 around that corner. It wasn't me. Anyway, uh, we're nearly back at abs. And we'll take that last look around. Now that I'm parked back up, I am sure that I'm not the only person who would like to hear how this sounds. So let's give it a couple of blips just to enjoy the revs of the RS5R. Very good, very good. So you get that kind of overrun burble and crackle going on. It's a deeper noise than I expected it to be from the V6, normally quite a high pitch sound. But let's just explore the inside of the car a touch more while we're here. Talk about things like the new steering wheel, so finished with the carbon fiber trim across the top, but also the flat bottom. There's a new shape to it, new grip, but still maintaining all of the controls, for example, to go through your different displays that you can have on the cockpit, which just has the option for absolutely everything, including that full screen map view that we're familiar with. I think pretty much everybody loves um, just for quite how dynamic it is and what you can go through and what you can show with the car. Um, your usual controls, your cruise control down there, lights, uh, wipers. On the right side, you've got your interaction with the telephone, the hotkey button that you can set to go where you'd like, for example, changing your drive select mode. Um, you've got your controls for the lights uh, settings down there. If I just open the door, mirrors in the door, you have your seat controls. So we've got various different things. Is that a massage seat that we have here? Got a lumbar, yeah, it is massaging seats. Cool, um, and the different movements that you can have out of it. The car has the Bang & Olufsen sound system, which is great. Um, the air vents are on the full width here, so they can do all sorts of gentle, soothing air patterns to make things a little easier. This is one thing I like. When you come in here and you press the buttons, they just wake up and know what you want, and that's quite nice. A very neat touch all around. Um, air conditioning, climate control, drive select buttons, traction, uh, sorry, auto start stop, traction, parking sensors and the camera that's currently up, because I had it in reverse, and then you can turn the screen off at the end, should you wish, USB port, cigarette, cup holders, hotkeys, your general MMI controls, configuration. It's obviously not the system that you'll find in the latest, greatest versions, the A8, the A7, the A6, for example. Um, the carbon fiber, uh, panel for the gear selector. Now I'm going to point out at this stage the Abt logo. If you start counting Abt logos in this car you will be going for a very very long time. Just for example one there, one there, one on the glass of the rear view mirror, one there, one here, and that's just up top. We've got floor mats on both sides, uh, the door mirrors, door mirror glass has the Abt logo in it. Basically, absolutely everywhere, more in the engine bay, more on every single part that the exterior of the car wears. It's a game that keeps going forever and ever. Up top, what do we have? Um, information and some SOS buttons and lights. Let's not play with any of those. So, let me just shut it off then for a moment and step out of the car just to have a last look really around the exterior, especially now that we've got some sun out on the Sonoma green bodywork of this car. The wheels with the silver stripe, not necessarily the biggest fan of that, but of course you can have them with different configurations depending how you want it. The ceramic brakes, huge, huge front ceramic discs. Big, big brakes that the car's wearing there. A couple of other parts that we didn't necessarily talk about, but the flared out parts on the fenders here. Um, besides strake, I suppose you could call that there. Again, ad logos, all carbon fiber. But yeah, I think it looks good. Definitely looks the part. In fact, they both do. The RS4R as well. Great to be able to see the two cars side by side as part of my, my drive today. So what do I think? If you want to inject more life into an Audi RS5, if the Audi RS5 is the car for you, but it's not quite exciting enough, 
well it's clearly a bit of a no-brainer to go down that route and do some more with it bring out more power make a car that's so stable going 280 odd on the autobahn but also just looks a little bit more punchy a little bit more like how a sports car of this nature should look so well done abs on how they've done that if you need the practical version you can't do better than the rs4r you might remember that i drove with the rs6 one of 12 edition 735 horsepower for a little bit from abs in nardo gray and that was i suppose the big brother to the newer the newer model but coming in underneath the version that we have now anyway it's just got really windy i'm sorry about that if it's come through on the camera but i thoroughly enjoyed that little drive so big thanks to abt i hope you've enjoyed the video and the opportunity to see it more up close and personal thank you as always though guys for watching i appreciate your support an awful lot and if you'd like to get instant notifications about new videos do ring the bell button down below that is it for this time though i will see you again very very soon cheers <laughs>